Monster Cat's release schedule changed. But why? Well, let's talk about why. First off, I want to say for a large part of this video in the first part, I'm going to try to be as unbiased as I possibly can and sort of just say the facts. I'll share my opinion a bit at the end, but uh, first, a little bit of a history lesson in past release schedules. From Monster Cat's inception in 2011 to about 2013, January, February, uh, it was a bit of the Wild West, just kind of releases whenever, all over the place, on weekends, on weekdays, really no structure, just whenever they felt like the song needed to be released something was released. Then in early 2013, they kind of got into a rhythm with a Monday, Wednesday, Friday release schedule of both at the time, obviously Uncaged Instinct and Silk didn't exist. It was primarily just the Uncaged and Instinct releases that were just at uh, any given time. It was dependent if it was Uncaged Instinct, didn't really matter. It was all just Monster Cat at that time. And it was that way for five years until 2018, early 2018, when Instinct and Uncaged split into two sort of sub labels, sub brands, and and uh, it went to a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday releases with Monday and Thursday being Uncaged and Tuesday and Friday being Instinct releases. Then when Monster Cat acquired Silk in February 2021, it moved to what we had for the last little bit of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with Monday being Uncaged, Tuesday being Instinct, Wednesday being Silk, Thursday being Uncaged, and Friday being Instinct and Silk. And now after the new changes, March 2023, it's still Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday is Uncaged, Tuesday is Silk, and Thursday is Instinct. So this is now sort of the fifth era of the Monster Cat release schedule, and uh, there are definitely some people that are not happy about it. Well, let's try to answer that why question. Why did Monster Cat change? Why did they do this release schedule adjustment? Well, there is a big comment from Darlington that I'm just straight up going to read because this is the answer of why they did it. So here it is. Um, he says, here, here is the TLDR, which is too long to read if you didn't know. Uh, Uncaged releases are undoubtedly our community bread and butter. It's a core culture and root to the entire history of Monster Cat. These releases also require much less lead time, do not have multi-month long radio campaigns, and consistently perform in a way that makes it time effective for a team. We have the space to do more here. Instinct releases require substantially more lead time. There are often more parties involved, vocalists, writers, etc. Uh, there are also multi-month global radio campaigns. By removing one release per week, we gain a lot more focus to work these records. This should give us a higher likelihood to create hits with our artists. Uh, Silk is trying to find its way or its place in our ecosystem. The success of some records compared to the struggle of others is drastic. For us to maintain our commitment to sustainability, we need to refocus the artist roster here to give more attention to marketing these releases and finding new avenues to expose the label to additional audiences. Final point on Silk, we have been seeing a large amount of success with Sirius XM slash chill radio station music that requires more lead time. More focus on roster should lead to more success for these artists. This is insane. We'll never add a release uh, slot in the future. There's always a way to grow, but for now we need to focus on what's working best for our artist, our artist roster and team. Also, P.S., uh, any of those controversial instinct melodic bass tunes that probably should have been on Uncaged will now be on Uncaged. The net change in releases won't be as drastic in as initial feelings might suggest. That is the big TLDR, the real, what Monster Cat, what Darlington believes to be the why behind this change is happening. Well, how do people feel about it? I put a poll up on my community tab on YouTube right away when I saw the changes, and I just asked kind of one of five simple questions. The new changes, do you absolutely love it? Think it's a good change? Meh, don't really care. Think it's a bad change and absolutely hate it. Well, the results, they're a pretty perfect, uh, what you would expect from a graph, a good average graph. And while there's obviously only 173 votes here, and this is not the be all end all of the community sentiment, this is just a small sample size. This is, I would say, a pretty good sample size. So 8% say absolutely love it, 23 say it's a good change, 39 are mad, don't really care, 27 thinks it's a bad change, and three absolutely hate it. Just kind of a quick note here, I find often when there are changes like this that happen in any ecosystem, in any kind of business, anything really, uh, it's often a vocal minority of people that are the ones that are commenting that are very, very up and ends about the change. Uh, and they're often, I find more often than not, a minority. And in this case, from this graph, this small sample size, it's 3%. And in a relatively small community like Monster Cat, I'd say relatively compared to like a big argument on like Twitter or YouTube or something like that, um, that 3% can be a very, very loud voice. Hear me out. If you're in that 3% and you're really, really against this and really don't like it, I am not in 
invalidating your opinion here at all. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I am trying to say though, is let's sort of be a little bit more cautious about how we're approaching the conversation if we really don't like it. Being up in arms saying this is the dumbest decision Monster Cat's ever made and Monster Cat's going to die because this change or this adjustment, that, that's not gonna help anyone. That's not healthy conversation or healthy dialogue. I think you'd be doing a disservice to the community that you are very clearly passionate about by just being so quick to absolutely hate it and just flood messages and flood boards and message boards about how much this is the dumbest thing in the world. Again, I'm not discrediting your opinion. I think just the way you go about expressing it just maybe take a look at it. Okay, obviously that was my opinion, sort of a little bit of a sidebar, but let's talk about what I believe to be at least the three main points of concern or topic in revolving this new schedule change. Number one is fairly the most obvious big change is that Instinct and Silk are losing half of their releases. The argument here that Darlington has essentially said is that they will be able to do more with one release per week and more focus on those individual releases than they could have with two releases. This is truly the ultimate argument of quality over quantity. By association, yes, there will be fewer artists, there will be fewer releases because of this, but the true hope is that they will be so much better, the releases will be so much stronger, they'll get so much more success because they're pulling back on the quantity. And with that gets to kind of point number two, that's the main point of discussion, is that there's a more focus on the Instinct and Silk roster now. Because releases are gonna be more few and far between, and there's gonna be only about 52 releases a year, uh, the roster will be quote unquote, halved for both Instinct and Silk. Yes, again, you will be losing some of that quantity and you'll be losing some of that variety in some area, but the hope and the true hope would, that you would be gaining so much more in quality. Again, just sort of in my opinion here, but Monster Cat really isn't that ma and pa label that a lot of us, I think, especially me, have kind of grown up on and really, really loved. Monster Cat just isn't that anymore. They are so much bigger than that and they need to grow as a business as a label grows. For what feels like years now, I felt like I've heard people complain about how the Monster Cat family doesn't feel like a family as much anymore. There's so many new artists, there's so many one-offs, there's so many just things that are here and gone that there really isn't a core set of artists anymore. Well, the hope is here you go now. With fewer artists, the hope would be that there is a more sense of feeling of family with both Instinct and Silk releases. It kind of makes being an Instinct or Silk artist a little bit more sort of prestigious now. It's a byproduct of a change that is both good and bad for artists. So let's look at two artists here, for example, that have been affected by these changes. Half an Orange has commented and they said that, uh, I will say on Instinct as a smaller artist, it was a bit of a bummer to put out a song and two days later the marketing cycle had ended. Getting a week of fan and industry spotlight will be game changing for those records. So very clearly here, Half an Orange is on board. They like this and they've expressed their uh, appreciation for this change. But on the flip side of it, let's look at Cloud Cage. Cloud Cage also commented and said, this feels like it doesn't benefit us smaller guys at all. And you know, in the end, again, my opinion, I, I think both are right. As much as it sucks for Cloud Cage, Monster Cat has just become that quote unquote more prestigious label to get into now. For those non-uncaged artist type people, it will be harder to get a Monster Cat release. But again, the trade-off that I want to hammer in more and more is that this hopefully will provide a greater yield of quality for both Monster Cat and the artists in the end. Also, just a quick note on Silk here, for actually 12 years uh, before Monster Cat acquired it, Silk actually just had one release per week. That was it. Once Monster Cat acquired it, they moved to two. So we were really just eating well for Silk uh, for the last two years. But um, uh, it, it seems like they recognized that one a week was truly the play for success in the Silk scene. And the third big point of topic conversation is that it seems like Monster Cat is favoring Uncaged. For this, first of all, well, it clearly is a win for all of the Uncaged fans. Due to what Darlington said, where there is less required lead time for to succeed, and this being the core audience, this is really an absolute win for Uncaged uncaged fans. And with Darlington, what he said that the uncaged fans are a core is the primary audience of Monster Care listeners. Darlington also went on to quote and say that I also want to make it clear that having more or less songs per week doesn't make one label more important than another. Transparently, Instinct is now earning more revenue per release on average than uncaged records. The highs are much higher there. It truly feels like Monster Cat is trying to do what they believe is best for each brand, each sub-label as a whole. Darlington and the team at Monster Cat they're, they're not dummies. We as a audience, as a listener, don't have the data behind this to, to back these decisions. We don't know what it is. We don't know how much an uncaged release makes or an, an instinct song makes or a silk song or how much community average it has or all this. We don't see any of that data. We just 
listen to the songs. I think it's really easy to just be a fan and be in that fan mindset and not really think about the semantics of how running a label really works. I think it's really easy for a lot of us to just go, we want more releases, we want this, we want all this, we want that. But like in the end, we're not the ones running the show. We are, we don't, don't, we don't have anything at stake here. We just listen to the music. Yeah, everyone has their own preferences, but Monster Cat is trying to adhere to all of our preferences at once, still run a successful business, still grow, still thrive, do so much at once. So hopefully that was a bit of unbiased. I know I put my opinion here and there a little bit circled in, but I, I hope that was fairly bipartisan to some extent. So with that now out of the way, let's sort of talk about what I truly believe my opinions are on all of this. First off, um, it doesn't really matter what I think. I'm not on staff at Monster Cat. I'm not an artist. I'm just a guy that enjoys Monster Cat. I really have no skin in the game here. And yes, totally, I'm a fan. I would probably call myself a super fan. So the Monster Cat staff and artists should sort of care about what I say, or I guess generally for all the fans out there. But in the end, I mean, I'm not the one that is running the label. I'm not the one that is making the songs. This is just one guy with, opinion, with an opinion. Monster Cat obviously isn't trying to actively run the label into the ground. They are trying to make it grow. They're seeing all the data, they're seeing everything, and they're trying to do what they believe is best for the label to succeed. And in their eyes right now, if that means making a more core, smaller set of artists for Instinct and Silk and having less releases there and hyping them up more, well, then that's what success looks like for Monster Cat right now. And yes, that means we will have some higher highs with some of these releases, and we just won't have as many artists that there, as there was before. That's the trade-off that Monster Cat is very clearly, knowingly, willingly walking into, knowing that this will hopefully give greater success in the end. But, you know, in the end, I, I think I like the changes. Very honestly, I haven't been loving Instinct and Silk this last past couple years, and uh, I truly hope this brings out greater quality in releases. I'm an Instinct guy through and through. I really, really do like Instinct. That's my bread and butter. It's what I favor more than anything. A lot of my top favorite tracks on Scott are Instinct. And I just hadn't been loving the brand. I hadn't been loving the sub-label for the last little bit. And I'm hoping that this changes things and moves it around and that we'll be getting more tracks that I really, truly enjoy. As for Silk, I have said out loud a bunch of times that I'm not the hugest Silk enjoyer, which is totally okay. I'm not the target demographic for that. And uh, I mean, there are tracks that I do enjoy from Silk here and there. And so I hope that this also increases the amount of tracks I enjoy from Silk because I personally found Silk just to be the same sort of track over and over and over and over and over again with a kind of more unique one sprinkled in here and there. So the hope is that we get more of those unique ones. As for Uncaged, well, we're getting more Uncaged releases and I like that. Well, Instinct is obviously my go-to. I really do like Uncaged a lot too. And there are a lot of artists on there and a lot of songs I really enjoy from Uncaged. And hearing and seeing more Uncaged releases is gonna be great for me. So in the end, to wrap up this whole video, uh, we don't have the data to support whether or not this is a good or bad decision yet and or at all in the first place. You watching right now very, very likely haven't seen any of this unless you're Darlington. In case, I hope it didn't piss you off. Monster Cat is clearly trying to do what they think is best for the label to succeed. I personally like the changes. You may not like the changes and that's okay. Again, there will always be people on both sides of any change of anything that happens in the world. The people that like something, people that don't like something, and honestly, a lot of people in the middle that don't really care. So as a reminder, let's just try to stay civil about these comments, about this whole thing, because in the end, uh, only time will really tell how this goes. We'll really just have to wait and see how this pans out. And uh, you know, that might take a long time.